welcome to round four of our Star Wars Destiny tournament from, uh, it's a box tournament from Face to Face Games in Toronto. It took place uh, a few weeks ago on uh, January 28th. Uh, it was a good tournament. This is round four of five. Uh, my name is Travis Provick. And I'm Sharon. And yeah, here we have uh, Carolyn playing against John. Carolyn's playing uh, pretty standard uh, Elite Django Elite Veers that we've seen a lot of uh, from this tournament. And uh, also something we've seen a lot this tournament is John Gobey playing the Elite Bala um, First Order Stormtrooper Django Veers. Django, not Django Veers. It's not one name. It's just Django. <laughs> they can split up. They're not the original odd couple. Sorry. It's like now it's just a proper name, Django mm -hmm. Veers. It sounds very Star Wars. Th that's true. Jar Jar Veers would be much more Star Wars, but... So let's like wait Carolyn, for the next pack for yeah. that next next set. Looks like Carolyn won the roll and uh, took the battlefield. So John is doing the indecisive. Uh, I don't know who you're going to target first. Splitting of the shields between, uh, or maybe they just don't get along. Maybe you have to share everything like two children, uh, two siblings. Everyone they have to get one shield of a fight. Yeah, I I don't know. I do tend to split up my sh shields. I I feel like. Um, it leaves the opportunity for my opponent to make a mistake about who target who they target first. Yeah. Sometimes I'll experiment with thinking that I'm better at mind games than I am, is I'll put the shields on the person that I don't want them to target. Yeah. <laughs> or sorry, that I do want them to target. Um and try to try to encourage them to, to target the other guy instead. Yeah. So we saw F eleven Blaster on Django on Carolyn's side and a hunker down on uh, Veers. Uh, John responded with an on the hunt on Django. So, uh, I mean, many viewers might be familiar with John Gobey. He helps uh, administrate some of the major Facebook groups for Star Wars Destiny uh, and has also um, made some nice alt arts that he's playing with here. Uh, and he also actually just started his own YouTube channel doing uh, commentary for videos, uh, which is Starkiller Base. So I'll try to put a link to that in uh, the video description when we, this goes up. So we saw the first couple rounds be the ever-entertaining Django dance uh, when you ever have Django's facing off each other. And it's actually probably more disadvantageous, or at least from the Django player's perspective, to have to go first with your character. And then they roll in your Django, you probably roll in your Django, but they're activating first. So they can mess with all of your dice, especially in this case yeah. with the Django beers. Uh, it, it, to get their choice. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of that in this game going back and forth. Like, no, you activate a character. No, I can do this, and you activate a character. Um, well, you, you often don't want to Django a Django uh, because they get their dice free and clear. You don't. Yeah. So you're better off waiting until they activate one of their other characters instead of just kind of getting everyone rolled in. I would think it... it yeah, you really have to look at the situation of his dice and your dice. I mean, if your Veers has a lot of uh, base damage, yeah. I think it's fine. But if your yeah, you're right. If your Veers is sitting on like um, uh, nothing, basically, you might not necessarily want to activate your Django because not a ton. Well, even if you do. have a lot of base damage, because Django's aren't pluses. You're right. With this case, with not a lot of upgrades, because uh, the other problem is that just it, they they're going to have a chance to do some kind of mitigation. They could dodge that massive damage roll you have. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you wait. They may activate one of the other characters. You still could have your your Veers dice to play against, and you mm -hmm. can use those dice without them having a chance to get in everything. Yep. So, and as we end up with uh, three damage on a Bala on uh, John's side. Backup muscle. Backup muscle comes into play. We have four damage on Django on the other side. Um, so, not looking looking like it's uh, after a bit of a bumpy start. Yeah, and John's playing the his upgrades well here because. Caroline's, I think, it, it correctly identified that in all things being equal, Bala is the, it's a better target for her to go after, even though she's only a two-character list. Bala's not as dangerous as he sometimes is, but he's the elite, and he's less health. So John's putting the upgrades on Django for obvious reasons, because Django can resolve them before they can be messed with, but also to make him more attractive or, or more a balance um, in, in dice between him and uh, him and Bala. So we see the second backup muscle of the game. I'm... Willing to bet we'll see at least three, if not all four, come out yeah. as finishers. Both decks do... Uh, oh, there's a second one in John's hand already. So there's the third one. Uh, they go through cards so fast on rerolls often that they're turning through cards a lot. So we start off the Holdout Blaster on Jago over on Carolyn's side. 
And Carolyn is running the frozen wastes here, which is the more traditional. Yep. Um, battlefield. Oh, the frozen wastes allows you when you claim it to remove a character dice, uh, and it is character dice, not upgrade, from the opponent. Uh, and since Jango Veers is so fast in action economy that they are claiming the battlefield more often than not, especially against a three character list, that they'll basically lets you just claim and remove any dangerous dice on the other side. So this is very interesting. There's a second on the hunt on Django on John's side, which against the Django Veers deck would be a little bit of a waste in terms of the special, but he's ended up with three shields on Veers, so that special that he just rolled is actually going to be uh, more impactful than you think it might in this matchup. Definitely for, yeah, because the Hunker Down was already out, plus these these decks both uh, run dug in. Duggan being such a great card, uh, and they hold the battlefield a lot in a lot of matchups. Plus the on-the-hunt, uh, although it's a bit expensive to be using the special that often for um, for the Django Bala Trooper player, they can reduce dice removal. Yeah. So you can remove a lot of, of dice off of the Django activations. So Caroline's thinking about whether she should activate her Django. She's having the discussion we had earlier in her head, I think. Yeah, well, I think, I think she may even... John may be even pointing it out, uh, kind of how that dynamic works. Mm -hmm. It's usually uh, pretty helpful to pretty pretty helpful to particularly to, to newer players. I mean, I, I don't, I hadn't seen Carolyn at tournaments before, so I'm going with the assumption that she hasn't played in too many. But of course, she could be a veteran of both Destiny and other games. And the Django Veers player, I think Django and Veers are running some kind of legal gun smuggling operation out of the Empire or something because they're sitting on five resources which is yeah. <laughs> richer than I've seen this deck ever. Oh, nice. So she is going to, uh, he doesn't like you to get rid of that special dice for the On the Hunt, which mm -hmm. actually is going to be pretty a, a nice healthy swing. Absolutely, because it represents a, a three damage plus an Electroshock. Basically all in one dice. And she's piling up on the cash. Because she got to pay for the two damage, and you know, there's always more upgrades to play. Well, this is, I think, one of the mistakes you can sometimes get to. Like, you want to use those dice, but sometimes you probably should be rerolling to damage. You got to go fast. In this matchup, uh, and we're yeah, yeah. I think I think once you go past this third, fourth round, the utility of your money starts to drop considerably. I think in the first round or two, that money actually might have been good because then you would give you the luxury of uh, using basically everything else for rerolling after that because you'd be set up, but. But now, yeah, it's getting getting backup muscles around the table. Damage is really flowing in to uh, her Django. Yeah, she wanted to get the IQA oh, out that for makes the next sense. round. Makes a lot of sense. I understand that. It, she she just wants to try to kill, make sure Bella is dying at least roughly the same time as Django does. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you want it? Well, you, really you actually want it first. earlier. But yeah. if it if he if Django dies before Bella dies. Like you're you're really behind the curve. Yeah, but in this case, Bell has no upgrades on him yet. It's a little no, that's less where your danger is. than that's where your damage is. Yeah. And her Django's taking a lot of damage, but it's equaled on Bella. Plus, you know, Django's going to die at some point. But then we're gonna have Veers with a F11 D, a hold up blaster, and an IQA. Yeah, and that's a pretty dangerous Veers. Like he can one shot <laughs> that stormtrooper easy. Put some serious pressure on Django. So we got uh, two damage onto uh, Django, bringing him up to seven. So not dead yet, but not uh, in great shape. Yeah, because so, uh, it's dangerous for next turn for her um, simply because the there's fight dirty. There'll probably be a two of in John's deck. Yeah, I I don't I highly doubt he would he would go with the. Um, uh, arm to the teeth for the kill uh, this early, but that's also like there's burst damage that can come out of nowhere to, to kill you once you're at 7. Plus the there's one damage still on the personal... The, oh, actually no, there's one damage... Uh, no, because he's gonna he can put down another backup muscle, but that won't be enough to kill next turn. But get awfully close. Yeah. Oh no, it's 8. Yep, that's... that's Django. It's, a, it's, it's enough. It's 2 actions, yeah. So yeah, so Django is not long to this world, but you can roll in and resolve some of his dice before both of them go off, because she has the battle. Well, she actually doesn't want to have to roll anything in here. This is the problem. Like, 
if she rolls, it gives Django a chance to finish it off before she can do anything. If she doesn't roll, the backup muscles get her. <laughs> backup muscles get her. So, I mean, I think you have to... You get to roll off the bat. But Django, I mean, he... Yeah, he's got a lot of base. That's true. Even the melee dice would be enough. So, yeah, Django would probably hit something to get you. But, it'll, you know, three damage sides. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he would. I think probably what you do is you just roll Django off the bat. I would, so I, thought I would think and you just roll Django and just hope that her Django doesn't kill you. Yeah, or his Django doesn't kill him. His Django, John's Django doesn't kill you. And, and if he doesn't, you get something with the dice. Yeah. And uh, if he dies, then you can redeploy. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you wouldn't want to... In this case, you don't necessarily want to be doing Veers first here. No, because you're not going to be able to take advantage of the redeploy this turn. Which which is definitely will happen with the backup muscle. Mm -hmm. And a... Yes, she lost the redeploy. Yeah, you're right. I don't. I think definitely not Veers in that case. Okay. Bit of a misstep on her point, and the IQ well, didn't help. It, her. it didn't matter at this point. Well, it didn't matter. It did because she could have re-rolled the yeah. the guns. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. You gotta overwrite that. Oh, absolutely. Especially on three shields. <laughs> So it's a disrupt and two damage modifiers, so can't even take Bala out here. Yeah. And I think that, uh, oh, I should definitely have to discard to reroll, I think. Two of those dice, I would discard to reroll. Two of those dice, for sure. Uh, I'd have to keep the plus two, just because you want, eh, maybe not even. You just want base damage more than anything else, but. Oh, this. I mean, she could be going for a trooper kill with that much damage, but I don't. Yeah, the most she could do, I think it's two plus four, six. Yeah, yeah it's going to be wasted anyway. Well, there's just too many things that can deal with the one dice. Yeah. So even if you had something where you could do all of the damage at once, um, the chances of you being able to get it off were very low. So it rolls, gets a shield, and a dollar. A, a dollar, resource. yeah. Bala, not a great roll. A shield for himself, or maybe a resource, a resource I believe, in a blank. So yeah, it, it doesn't look very good for Carolyn here. It does not. And all those hard-earned shields are, are gone now from some damage. And Django is showing the... It's always very satisfying as a Django player to take that melee side you hate to see and get a, get a kill a hunker down with it. Um, so uh, uh, John is going to be able to discard here. He has two resources showing. He's going to be able to discard for for damage, I think, for this turn. He might even Absolutely. be able He's to... He's a ton off. of dice. He can do four, six... Eight. I mean, he could do ten uh, theoretically. That would be an awfully good roll, but it's possible, and that would be enough to get to your to yours. And he's got five discards to do yeah. with. I think he's going slowly here, hoping she might uh, claim the battlefield. Well, yeah, there's really no reason for her to do that at all. And it actually, only needs eight on Veers. Oh, oh, she did, she, she did claim the she battlefield. Claim the battlefield, remove the character die. Any choice because she can do that at any point and just remove the die with damage on it. So it seemed a little early. Yes, and she had the electric shock, so she could have mitigated a couple points of mm -hmm. a couple dice worth of damage. So now she's looking at just rerolls until she he hits. I think five is the most he can have. Six, no six, because he's got a Django dice. Oh no, he's got on the hunt dice. So I think the most is four actually. So he's not gonna look. It doesn't look like he going to try too hard because it doesn't think there's going to be enough damage to... And he's got a, he's got a whole mitt full of control cards. Like, not a, not much damage going to get through where he doesn't want it to go at this point. Yeah, I saw a cannon fodder to eat a damage. And I believe electroshock as well. Yeah, Duggins can sometimes make you like really anxious to get the battlefield. It's true. Yeah. So we get an F11 on the trooper. Fears rolls in. Django rolls in response. She's got the resources, but Fears kind of let her down. It's two shields. Oh. Two damage and a special. Uh, so four damage and two shields is, is decent, but it's not. She needs a lot more. 
This means Especially... there's no way to save Bala. Uh, well, it is split over two actions. Which is good. I mean, it's at six. It just has to do the, the rifle special and the IQA. Oh, that was eight, right? Sorry. Yeah, apologies. Yep. Yeah. So it gets rid of that. At least makes pay for the kill. Okay, so Veer's looking a little better. I still think <laughs> the amount of dice on the good. other side is is a problem. But I mean, there's a lot of light dice on Jenga, but there's really not that much damage. So yeah. and that's Veer, one positive. Veer's is on 12 health, effectively. Electroshocks away some of that damage. Or it doesn't. Or it does. No, or she discards, she discards rule. rule. Uh, well, John has no resources. Oh, yes, he does. He's got resources he's got in his resources. alternate... Yeah, so he's got two, four, five damage. Yeah. I don't know what else was in her hand. The electroshock wasn't was the choice. But... Oh, there goes the shields. Wow. Goodbye, goodbye, Duggan. Wish I had an electroshock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was uh, yeah, well. Um... Oh, and the... Oh, I wonder if Caroline realizes the on the hunt. Um, but if she... Sh I mean, she might shift it to another black while she can, but one of those is just going to go away with all of John's money and is on the hunt dice. Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll pay, easily pay. So, in, in this case, actually, who... Let's say... Caroline did have damage. Would you target the trooper or would you target Django? I think Django still, I suppose, because the trooper does have the redeployable gun. But I, I put go with the trooper. You go with the trooper. He's easier to kill and he's what, doing more damage. Seven, seven da like there was three shields on yeah. Django, so that's thirteen damage you have to get through. Yeah, I think I yeah I think I think I do agree with you there that despite the redeploy, the trooper's just easier to get rid of and get you just a little closer. You know, in a very difficult situation. That takes it up to six damage on uh, Veers. Yeah, that that on the hunt was a killer. That's brutal. It, that was five damage swing. Uh, yeah. Right. So it's not not just the three shields that were on him, but the fact that the hunker down is going to stay. So yeah, unfortunately, this game is pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. Yeah, it, yeah, it swung pretty bad on a on a few of those plays, which are really hard to see at the time of the act, early activation of Django on that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Veers on that one turn. Yep. But it, it only mattered very little. I mean, it would have you would have got a few more dice that you could roll, but it was likely not going to change the overall outcome. So no, I guess Bala didn't do a lot of damage after that. It was really what whether Bala, when Bala was going to die. Yeah. So John replaces the hunker down with a jetpack on Django. More dice to re-roll, or to sorry to roll in reaction. Mm -hmm. And the Django Bala trooper was partially like a response deck to Django Veers yeah. in a way, and the matchup is quite good. Yeah. Uh, just because that little extra health, basically the same damage output. So we got to a little bit of damage. You got a black dice there to, uh, so all the bonuses from Django will apply. He'll react here. Yeah, would pretty... not be surprised to see enough damage to. Yeah, there's get it plus right here. three on the jetpack, so that I think that is enough. No, there's no, there's no base. Sorry, I missed. I that's a blue dice on the on the. Um... Yeah, they're both blue. Yeah. Uh, so that's. Oh, you're right. Four, Sorry. six. So there's plus six, but no base. Yep. So, rolls a ton of dice with a chance to get a base. <laughs> Not that on the hunt special, but plenty of black. Plenty of base damage for the range. So. Barring a dodge and money she doesn't have, then... Yeah, it looks like this is it now. She's using the, he doesn't like you, but he's just pointing out it doesn't matter. All right, well, 
that uh, that was painful. There was a lot of damage there. Uh, it's a, it's a t it's a t I think it's a tough matchup for Django Gears uh, at this point. Um, just the the health differential and uh, all of the control dice, the control cards is, is tough. Yeah, absolutely, and you're and I there was it wasn't a very impactful battle activation, but still, Valak got off his special there. Plus, the focus in some cases can really help. We didn't see it much in that game, but that that battle of focus can really add some consistency to yeah. to Django and J more importantly, Django plus upgrades damage. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us for this, uh, and uh, we'll be back soon with uh, round five.